he brought me to the east gate, and behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the east, and his voice was like the noise of many waters, and the earth did shine with his glory. And the glory of Yahweh came into the temple through the east gate, and the glory of Yahweh did fill the house, and I heard him speaking to me out of the house. And he said to me, Son of man, the place of my throne, the place of the soles of my feet where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever in the place of my holy name. Now show them the temple to the house of Israel. Show them the design of the temple and measure the pattern. Show them the form and the seat of the house and the fashion and the comings and goings. This is the Torah of the house upon the top of the mountain. The whole limit thereof round about shall be holy. Behold, this is the law of the house. Okay, guys, we're beginning a new series called Show Them the Design, the Measuring of the Pattern of the House. So there you could see in the intro of the video how the, the, in the second coming, now we use this expression second coming, but really there's three kind of comings of the Son of Man. The first of which is the Son of Man, he comes in the clouds. Okay, then he comes on a white horse. And then he comes on the Mount of Olives. And when he comes on the Mount of Olives, his feet will uh, stand on the Mount of Olives. And then there's something else to where he, his glory appears in the temple. So these are prophecies that will happen. And it's the physical manifestation on the earth of Alpha and Omega. Now, that is the uh, ushering in of the period of time called the millennium. Okay, so what we're going to do in this series of messages is we're going to talk about the design of the, the house, the Ezekiel temple. Because in that design, there's very, very significant things and details. So that's a 3D rendering in the intro video that shows you uh, some of that, I'll have links in the description field for other uh, portions of it that um, this person did. It's very, it's probably the best one I've seen, but keep in mind, a lot of it is subject to certain types of interpretation. Now, um, if you want to get ahead, okay, of this teaching, getting ahead of what we're talking about here, when it's talking about show the pattern, show the design, many of the things that are in the pattern in, or in the design are all around in this room right now and we're going to get into it but we have to go through e a teaching of each detail each thing one at a time now what are we talking about well ezekiel has yahweh appear to him in a similar fashion to the coming of the son of man coming in the clouds that's ezekiel chapter one then ezekiel chapter 40 through 42 he's being shown many things in the temple. Then Ezekiel 43, Yahweh comes into the house and continues to give him the details, uh, the rest of the details of the house. Now, those details and what happens in that um, revealing, okay, of this pattern is the architectural structure of the temple. Well, this is one of one example of this but it's happened four times the first time is moses moses as well goes up into the mountain mount sinai where yahweh appears to him and he gives him the vision of heaven and the vision of the tabernacle okay then david as well writes by the spirit the pattern the architectural layout of the first temple then we have Ezekiel doing the same, giving this detail, the most, I mean, a lots of detail, like Moses. The tabernacle had lots of detail. The Ezekiel temple has lots of detail. Ezekiel temple has never been built. Then we, we have John. In the book of Revelation, we have John describing to us New Jerusalem. Now, what are all these patterns? What are all these designs? Each one is a step, guys. It's a phase. Think of it as the Garden of Eden. So we have the Garden of Eden, and we have the... Um, uh, 
Adam and Eve eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and even and then taken out. Many of the details in the Garden of Eden is like a tabernacle or a temple. Okay, So they're banished and then thus begins the restoration of mankind to bring them back to the Garden of Eden. Okay, Of course, the only way to do this is with a Messiah, a sinless, spotless lamb. So Yeshua, Jesus Christ, fulfills that Okay, in his first coming. Then in his second coming, he reigns for a thousand years and he thus continues the order of this pattern. Okay, Now, um, some of you noticed that I was offline 40 days. In the period of the 40 days, okay, basically let's, let's talk about the 40 days in a couple ways. Moses first goes into the mountain 40 days. All right. Now, before he does, in uh, Exodus chapter 19 and 20, the Most High appears on Mount Sinai and speaks his commandments to the people. The people say, no, we don't want to hear him. You go, Moses, and you tell us. So Moses goes, he goes into the mountain 40 days. In those 40 days, he gets the pattern, okay? We'll see that that pattern is exactly the same with Ezekiel. Now, not the building because it's a tabernacle. They're just traveling, okay, to give us this idea of traveling. But then uh, Ezekiel obviously has the temple in Jerusalem. But what I'm getting at, guys, is he's given the instructions before the children of Israel begin to make their mistakes, and then Yahweh has to uh, make changes based on their mistakes. Okay, so what, what is the pattern? The pattern is, well, it starts with Exodus uh, 20 with the Ten Commandments. His commandments don't change. The Ten Commandments still the same. Okay, it starts with his commandments. After those commandments, he then begins to give them the pattern. That pattern goes from Exodus 23 to around Exodus 31, okay? Because he completes those 40 days, and what happens? The golden calf. Thus begin the mistakes, okay? And then, you know, but that period of time, if you want to read ahead, each vessel, each um, thing has great significance there. We'll see it has great significance in the fulfillment of Christ's first coming. And it has great significance in Ezekiel's temple. So if you want to get ahead, you can read um, those chapters as well. What I'll do is this is the intro video to the playlist. And what we'll do is we'll have the other times we've gone over these vessels. Okay, for example, the menorah. We've shown you how the menorah as a vessel, we don't actually need a physical menorah because the characteristics and the details of it we can find in 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 God's creation he said he would put uh, signs in the heavens in creation in uh, in the fourth day well those are the sun and the moon the eclipses okay so those eclipses are part of the menorah so we've we're not going to uh, cover that a whole lot in this series we're going to cover some of the other details okay but that's an example of where I'm going to put videos in this playlist of things we've already covered, okay? Some of which we'll have to do some refresher on and, and some other things. Guys, this is going to be very deep. It's very profound. What it boils down to is this. Now, we're going to get into all these details, and sometimes people say, Leon, what? You give us all these details. What is the, what is the point? What is the big picture? The big picture is this. Very simple. Jesus Christ is Alpha and Omega. Okay, he's going to reign for a thousand years in Jerusalem. When he does, he's going to have a temple. All of that is his throne, is him reigning king. Okay, that is what the whole apocalypse is. The apocalypse is not about you. It's not about you being raptured. Okay, that's why you'll see when Ezekiel get these instructions, it's for the people to repent, to change. And that's the whole purpose of this series, okay? If you just watch this and think this is all just nice Bible study, you're, you've totally missed the point. The point is for you to realize how off base you are, how selfish you are, how you are not prepared for his coming, and for your desire to change. Change, repent, turn to him with all your heart to get as close to him as possible when he reigns. Why? Because he's going to be in Jerusalem. 
Okay? The ones closest to him will be in Jerusalem. Outside of that, there will be the 12 tribes. Okay? Outside of that will be the, the Garden of Eden. Okay? And outside of that will be the Persian Empire. So all the people will be in a boundary. You'll see in Mount Sinai, when uh, Moses had the, um, came to the mountain, you'll see Moses went to the, the mountain. The people couldn't go to the mountain. God set boundaries. Okay? So he always has to set boundaries because the people are so wicked and evil that they will destroy themselves. He's good. Okay? His mercy endures forever. But this channel is really for those that have a strong desire to be as close to him as possible. Okay? So his, the book and the instruction is the same. All right? So Ezekiel receives this uh, vision and he's taken physically to the, uh, this temple in heaven. Okay? And it was never built. It can't be built. The Jews can't build it because they believe the temple is on the Temple Mount, which we believe to be a Roman fortress, and it's bigger than that. It doesn't fit. Okay? So the Jews could not build it when they came out of Babylon. Okay? Ezekiel was in Babylon. He's in captivity, and he gets this vision, and he said the instructions are write it for the people so they can see. Well, they couldn't rebuild it. They weren't supposed to. It wasn't the time. The only time is when the Messiah comes. It's only the Messiah that can build a temple. All right? Now, in the, in the apocalypse, in the revealing, yes, the Jews will build a third temple. But you will see it says measure the temple. All right? Why? Because you will see the measurements of what they build is not Ezekiel's temple. Ezekiel's temple basically has seven temples. You'll see the gates and we'll, and we'll, we'll go through more of this as this series progresses. But let's talk about how in Jerusalem this story, this knowledge of what exactly is going to happen is known. Okay, so let's go to Jerusalem. Now here in the Mount of Olives, there's this beautiful walkway and garden uh, in the Russian Orthodox Church. And what we thought what would do was describe to you and talk a little bit about this place. It's almost like the Mount of Olives is the place of his ascension. And he said, I will come back and his feet will rest on the Mount of Olives. So it's like a, it's like a east gate, okay? And in Ezekiel's temple, it, you know, talks about these gates, this, this the perimeter in the, of the, the holy place, the holy precinct. And that's what we consider this, this place, is a, the place of the ascension, the place where his feet will rest. If it's not this particular church, it's this area. So that's um, an important like gate or something to uh, kind of memorialize what, you know, Christ actually did this. It was not just spiritual, it actually happened, okay? And it's going to happen according to his word. Every word he said is going to happen, including what he said in Zechariah 14, the soles of his feet will rest on the Mount of Olives. Here is the East Golden Gate, and you can see the Muslim cemetery placed in front of it. So the Muslims knew this story of a temple being reformed in Jerusalem, and they closed the gate, this Eastern Gate, and they placed a cemetery in front of it, believing that the Messiah, that when God came and rebuilt the Millennial Temple, that he would not pass through a cemetery. Okay, so now we're on the Mount of Olives, we're looking out across, and we're pointing out where the cemetery is. There are grave sites running all along the wall, this eastern wall. Okay, and there we're pointing out that gate, the eastern gate, the golden gate. Now, we don't necessarily consider this to be the location of the temple. Okay, we consider it a Roman fortress, but this story was known throughout Jerusalem. Now, there is going to be a Jewish third temple, okay, but then we have... Ezekiel's temple, the millennial temple, okay? And what we're pointing out here is this is actually where we believe the first and second temple were of Solomon and uh, the rebuilt temple in the city of David, okay? So that's what we're pointing out there. And we're not certain where exactly the eastern gate will be, but this is the area approximately of where the eastern gate was in the first and second temple, Okay, it's called the Ophel, right in front of you. 
Now what we're looking at is the east gate. This is called the Golden Gate. We can show you what it looks like a little bit inside. Behind me here is the uh, Gate of Mercy, or the East Gate, Golden Gate. It's uh, the one that's closed on the outside. It's, um, but that's what we have right here. And we can see, of course, this is a very old gate. What this does, guys, is this gate leads to the outside of the walls. Here in the Kidron Valley, looking up at the outside wall, Let's remember, he's going to come from heaven in a cloud and his feet will rest on the Mount of Olives. The Mount of Olives is behind us. Then, in uh, this direction somewhere will be uh, Ezekiel's temple. Then, when Ezekiel's temple's there, his glory, as we showed you in the intro, will pass through the east gate and will go into the temple. And when he goes into the temple, that's the place of his throne, and he said that's the place of his soles of his feet. So he will physically do this. This will literally happen. So we're showing you Jerusalem because this story is known here. Tour guides talk about this, okay? And Jerusalem may look completely different than it does right now, okay, what you're looking at here. But we're just showing you what it looks like now, and we're telling you this will happen. That's what the... Now, we have some notes for this video called Show the Heavenly Pattern. So we saw that the disciples, in Acts chapter 1, they're asking the Lord, will you at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? What are they asking? They're, they're asking, it's a good question, because they're on the Mount of Olives. Okay, they're on the Mount of Olives. Christ has ascended. He's in a glorified body. He's discussing some things with them. Okay, now what they think, and it's, it's a good question, they think that it's fulfilling Zechariah 14. His feet shall stand on the Mount of Olives. Okay, so they didn't identify quite yet the fact that there's two comings. You see that? So they thought he was going to restore the kingdom in Zechariah 14 where his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives because he's standing on the Mount of Olives and then he ascends. So, what does he say to them? In Acts chapter 1, verse 7, it is not for you to know the times and the seasons. So what does that mean? That means that they would not live to the millennium. They would not um, live long enough to see what it is they're asking him. Okay, Because he thought, they thought he would restore the millennial kingdom. But it wasn't at that time, okay? Then what happened? He was taken up in a cloud. And then there were two men standing by, and they said, he will return in like manner. So in the intro video, we saw the glory cloud, okay, that goes through the east gate and goes into the house, goes into the temple, okay? So we consider that event to take place after Zechariah 14. Why? Zechariah 14, his feet shall stand on the Mount of Olives. And it describes a great earthquake which will apparently change Jerusalem. Okay, that's why we say Jerusalem may look different. Okay. And Yahweh, Elohe, will come in all the saints with him. Okay, so of course the disciples were thinking, all right, this is, he's going to restore the kingdom right now. No, it's it's his second coming where this will take place. His feet will stand on the Mount Olives. And then the disciples and all the saints will come with him. It says that clearly in Zechariah 14. And it talks about living water shall go out from uh, Jerusalem. So that, of course, is Ezekiel 47, when it's talking about the living water coming out of the temple. Okay. Now, Zechariah 14, verse 20. And Yahweh's house shall be like bulls before the altar. Okay, so we have him standing on the Mount of Olives. We have an altar, and then it talks about Yahweh's house. So there is a temple in the millennium. That's what we're just making clear here. Okay, now in Zechariah chapter 6, it talks about who builds the temple. Uh, 611, take silver and gold and make crowns and set them upon Yehoshua, or in English it says Joshua, but it's Yehoshua, it's Yeshua, 
the high priest. So it, it's all about his crown, guys. It's all about his temple. Now look what it says. And the branch, to Samach, uh, he shall build the temple of Yahweh. Even he shall build the temple. It says it twice. So who is that? That's Christ. Christ is going to build the temple. And he shall sit and rule upon his throne, and he shall be a priest upon his throne. So it's all about his temple, his house, when? In the millennium. Okay, in the intro video we showed you this, where the dimensions of the temple precinct area is 500 cubits. The dimensions outside of that, called the holy area precinct, is 500 reeds. In Zechariah chapter 2, verse 1, he had a measuring line and he went forth to measure the width and the length. That means it's a perfect square. You only need two measurements in a perfect square. And if you add those up, 500, 500 is 1,000. So, yes, there is a millennial temple, okay, of a 1,000-year period with a temple that Christ will reign in. All right, let's just make that clear so there's no confusion. All right? Now, as we look at our notes, which I encourage you to get, we have something which we're calling the triumphal entry or the triumph of the king. So we saw that he will, his feet will rest on the Mount of Olives. We saw that he will go into the temple. Now, uh, the details, of course, we showed you in the, in the intro. We have details and characteristics in Ezekiel. We find that those match perfectly details and characteristics in Revelation. All right, so that's the pattern. So it says show them the pattern, show them the design. Now, when we do, we compare that design. We compare that scroll of Ezekiel to that scroll of of revelation to that scroll and pattern of Moses okay and we allow the scriptures to uh, tell us the meaning tell us the story okay guys what I'm doing is I'm showing you how to interpret scripture it says that scripture is of no private interpretation private in the Greek is idios idios means what you think and what that means is you read one portion of scripture and you think what you think what it means. No, that's not what you do. You read the portion of Scripture and you find and you compare it with another portion of Scripture. And another, okay, it's, it says, out of mouth of two or three witnesses. Now, that tells us what this means. So what does this mean? It means Jesus Christ is king. Well, that's obvious, but there's a triumphal entry. And I bet you never saw that, but that's what it's talking about in Revelation chapter 7. So, in our notes here, what you can see, it says, Wilderness, the river Chebar. So this is Ezekiel, and these are the verses in Ezekiel. And then you have John. John was on the island of Patmos. Okay, and then you have Moses. He was on Mount Sinai. So it's this story of Moses, wilderness, being in a difficult place, and then the Most High revealing the pattern. So Ezekiel gets the pattern of the millennial temple. John gets the pattern of New Jerusalem. Moses gets the pattern of the tabernacle. Now before this happens, you have Armageddon. So Christ will appear on his white horse and defeat the nations that are at war against him. So you see Armageddon, Ezekiel chapter 39, just prior to the temple being described. Okay, So that's Armageddon. That happens first. And that um, is what we see when we, when we look at uh, Zechariah 14, 2 and 3. It says, oh, the nations will be gathered at Jerusalem. Okay, so the Armageddon happens first, then we get the millennium. But within Revelation, um, and then we see Armageddon in Revelation 16, 16 and 19, 17 through 21. Okay, and then Revelation chapter 20 is the millennium. Now the millennium we see in 2 Peter chapter 3. Verse 8, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that a day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Okay? Now we see the millennium in Revelation chapter 20. Now, interesting enough, it says here a thousand years 
six times. Okay? So we won't read the whole thing, but we have it underlined here in orange. A thousand years. One. A thousand years. Two. A thousand years. Three. A thousand years. Four. A thousand years. Five. A thousand years. Six. Okay? So what does that mean? It says a thousand years six times. Six times a thousand is six thousand years. So that means that the seven thousand year is the millennium, the year of rest. Okay? So that's what it's talking about here when Christ will reign a thousand years. He will reign a thousand years and they will be priests. Okay? And they will reign with him. He saw thrones and judgment was given to them. Now, back to the triumphal entry of Christ into the temple. So, in the intro we showed you, it, it said the glory of the God of Israel. Okay? And then uh, another verse says that it was like when he was, saw the river Cherub. So, at, at the river Chabar, he saw the, the, something called the chariot of the cherubim, or four cherubim and four wheels. Now, the artist drew something like the wheels, but, you know, not the cherubim. It's very difficult to try and describe what is there if you read Ezekiel chapter 1. So he didn't really get into those details. But he said the glory was like that, okay? So we don't know if the cherubim were actually part of that, were the four wheels part of that, but the glory or the, the cloud was the kind of moving chariot, the moving throne that uh, took place there and it came through the east gate and went into the house, okay? So we know that is something called the chariot of the cherubim, of the four wheels, okay? And the throne was on part of that, okay? And he said the, the place of his throne, the place of the soles of his feet, okay? So the soles of your feet, that's a person, okay? And his soles of his feet were rest on the Mount of Olives. So that is not a spirit, a ghost, a cloud, okay? So he comes through the cloud, but then his physical feet, okay, will dwell where he dwells in the temple, okay? And then he spoke from the house. So that means that his throne is in the temple, okay? His, his throne is in the house where he will dwell in the midst of them forever. So what we're looking at is something in Ezekiel chapter 43, which we see in Revelation chapter 6 and 7. Okay, so Re Revelation chapter 6, verse 16 says, The Lamb on the throne. And then Revelation 7, 1, John saw four angels standing on the four corners, having the four winds. Okay, so what is happening here is something that is a design. It is, it is uh, the living creatures are actual architecture. So we've um, drawn out the temple, and this is basically uh, what, what most renderings will look like. But what we want to point out here is that this chariot of the cherubim, okay? So we saw four angels standing holding the four winds or the four wheels. So this is a, a design element and structure where the, his throne is in the center, okay? So you see this in Ezekiel chapter 1. You see this in Revelation chapter 7. So it, Ezekiel's saying he's seeing his glory like this, okay? Now, we've shown you this as the key of the house of David because once you understand this structure, the cherubim, lion, ox, man, eagle, everything works out from this throne, okay? So, for example, you see this pattern of four here, four, and then it replicates. So now you've got four, four, and four, and four. See that? So what happens is you can see that a cherubim is standing here, all right? And then it creates 12. All right? Now, if you look closely, and I remove my hands, you can see 
that the structure of the temple does the same thing. Can you see it? Okay, you have the cherubim standing, one, two, three, four. And here they are, the gates. So what you have is, these are gates, east, north, south, and then here is the temple. And so you can see this pattern of four reproduced here. Then there are gates on the outside. So, okay, so you see this one? Well, that's just like this one. And then you see this one? Well, that's just like this one. And then again, this gate here. So um, clearly, the design element of the living creatures actually forms the temple. Isn't that amazing? So that's what we're getting at when we're trying to show you the design elements of the temple. Now, this is a different kind of orientation that we, <laughs> that we normally have. Um, when I drew this out, you actually position it east like this, okay? But just for any of you that were looking at that and you would prefer to see that uh, north, like most of our maps, it would look like this, okay? So now you have the north gate, you have the east gate, you have the south gate. But I want you to pay attention to this pattern. We drew this pattern many, many years ago. You'll see it on my thumbnail. This is, this is something we saw time. We saw everything with this order. And the temple. Okay, so Ezekiel's temple also forms this structure. We have the north gate, the east gate, and then the south gate as part of this uh, structure. So what you have here, as we'll see, this is the inner court. Okay, so you have these gates, and then this area here is the inner court. This area here is the temple, and then there are various areas around it. This is a simplified view, and we'll get more into this later. So let's remember, in his triumphal entry, he will come in the glory, okay, like Ezekiel saw, from the east, okay? And this is the, the pattern of what he saw. And then there will be those that are before the throne of God, serving in the temple, okay? This is what you can see in Revelation chapter 7. And he that sits upon the throne shall dwell among them. All right, now this throne in this temple is talking about Ezekiel because clearly we can see the uh, pattern of the cherubim in Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 1, okay? And then it's talking about a throne. And so we're showing you that these uh, cherubim and what it's describing there actually form the temple, okay? And also in Ezekiel, let's remember what happened. It was at, uh, Ezekiel was at the east gate, and the glory of the God of Israel came from the east and went into the house. Well, we see in Revelation 7, 2, an angel ascending from the east, rising uh, from the east, from the rising of the sun, having the seal of God. Okay, so clearly, Revelation 7 and Ezekiel 43 is talking about the same thing, as is uh, Moses, he had, there, were, there were curtains, and the curtains were uh, blue, maroon, and red, essentially. Okay, and those were the colors of the east gate, all right? So this, this chariot, okay, comes in through the east gate. It's a throne, and this is what the ark is, okay, the ark of the covenant. And in Moses' tabernacle, it was his glory dwelled between the cherubim, okay, his seat, his throne, well between the cherubim, and that's what comes in through the east gate, okay? Now, all of that is amazing, but you may say, okay, Leland, what, what is the point of this? Why are you telling us? The point of what we're trying to get at is to get you guys to repent. I didn't read all of it, but Ezekiel 43, 7, he said, On Son of man, the place of my throne, the place of the soles of my feet, where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever in my holy name, shall the house of Israel no more defile, neither they nor kings. 
by their whoredom of their carcasses, and the kings of their high places, and the setting of their threshold by my threshold, and the post of their post by the wall between them, that have defiled my holy name with their abominations, what they have committed. Therefore I have consumed them in my anger. Let now them put away their whoredom in the carcasses of their kings. Okay, one of the things that we have here in Mount Zion, that's a huge problem, is this. Wherever the temple is, guys, it can't have this. It can't have graves. He rebukes us for the carcasses of our kings. So, um, where we are in Mount Zion, this is the traditional view of Mount Zion. Dispersed throughout it are these um, grave sites. Um, lots of cemeteries in here, guys. You can even see them beyond here. He's not pleased with this. Son of man, show the house to the house of Israel that they may be ashamed of their iniquities and let them measure the pattern. Now, the reason we measure the pattern, and we're pointing this out, is we have these two people groups in Revelation 7, and we find them also in Ezekiel. Um, and they shall be ministers in my sanctuary and have the charge of the gates of the house and the ministers of the house. They shall slay the burnt offering and the sacrifice for the people. They shall stand before them to minister them, because they ministered them before of their idols, and caused the house of Israel to fall into iniquity. Therefore I have lifted up my hand against them, and they shall bear their iniquity. They shall not come near to me to do the office of a priest unto me, nor come near to any of my holy things in the midst of the holy place, but they shall bear their shame and their abominations which they have committed." These are the Levites that have gone away far from me when Israel went astray and did error. Everyone in error. In Hebrew, this is Shaga. And it's uh, in Ezekiel 45, verse 20. talks about them in error, the ones that are simple. Okay? And this word error has a offering associated with it. It's called a wave offering. And it was for those that have not done the commandments shall do a wave offering. You can see that in Numbers chapter 15, verses 19 and 22, this wave offering, okay? Well, this wave offering we see in Revelation chapter 7, when we see the great multitude, okay? They are before the throne, and they serve him day and night in his temple. That's exactly what we could see when we were reading in Ezekiel. And they stood before the throne, and the Lamb clothed in white robes with palms or palm branches. It's a wave offering in their hands. So the great multitude is doing a wave offering. Why? It's ignorance. It's an ignorance offering. Okay, here we go, guys. We are waving the palm branches. Okay, they are robed in white robes and they are waving palm branches. So we're waving palm branches. This is the heave offering. The heave offering that we find in Numbers 15. We are waving the branches. We are waving these according to Revelation 7. Okay. Now what are these idols and abominations? Well, in Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 10, it talks about them having um, creeping things on the wall. Okay. So remember, we are the temple. And when we have creeping things, we have things in our temple that are abominations that are not pleasing and we are defiled, okay, that's what it's talking about. These idols, these abominations, what are they? They are religious spirits, okay? Just because you hear a voice, it doesn't mean it's God. There are religious spirits that also speak and they will be on the walls of the house of the person, okay? So this is the problem that Christ warned us about, okay? The spirits of Jezebel, the spirits of Balaam, the spirits of Balak, and the spirits of the Nicolaitans, okay? Many evil spirits and false prophets that are uh, described, false apostles, in Revelation to the seven churches, Revelation chapter 2 and 3, okay? So this is, so the great multitude is clearly defined between Revelation chapter 7 and Ezekiel. When the Most High is appearing to Ezekiel and describing the temple, okay? 
That's why the purpose of this is to get you to see this and to repent and change. Because we do see the other people group. In Revelation chapter 7, when you see 144,000 around the Lamb on Mount Zion singing a new song. Okay, well, these are the sons of Zadok. In Ezekiel chapter 43, 19, these are the, the sons of a Zadok that will approach him and come near to his table. I encourage you to read the, um, the chapter, Ezekiel 43 and 44, goes into great detail about them. But they will come near to the table. They will be teachers. They will be judges. Okay, they will be porters. It talks about their garments. Okay, these are the wedding garments that, that Christ talked about in the parable. Okay, and they uh, bring the first fruits. Okay, they keep the charge of the sanctuary. They are porters. They're in the chambers of the singers. They're singers. Okay, and then the wall of the inner court, the thickness of it is five cubits. Well, that's the five wise virgins. Okay. And the inner dimension is 90 cubits of the inner court wall. Okay, that's the wall of the inner court that we're looking at here. Outside of it is 100 cubits. Well, 90 times 4 is 360. 100 times 4 is 400. 360 times 400 is 144,000. Yes, the sons of Zadok are the ministers of the inner court. They're the 144,000. Okay, which clearly we see the same characteristics in Revelation 144,000 around the Lamb, they sang what? A new song. They are singers. And you can see the chambers of the singers here. Uh, they're before the throne and the living creatures. Okay? So remember, we showed you this with the living creatures. The living creatures are themselves the inner court. So the 144,000 are the inner court believers. They are the five wise virgins that follow the Lamb wheresoever he goes. They are first fruits unto God blameless before the throne and in new jerusalem the thickness of the wall is 144 cubits so guys that concludes this video i encourage you to get the notes and if you'd like to get ahead this is um some rough notes on the pattern of the sanctuary that we're going to go into okay so we're going to go over the ten commandments the ark the crown the table the menorah the curtains uh, the hangings, the veils, the altar, the courts, the vessels, the garments, the daily sacrifice, the altar of incense, a census, the brazen laver, the spices, Shabbat, and the inheritance. Okay, um, These are all the things we're going to talk about in this series. If you'd like, you will find these here in Exodus chapters 20 through 31. And... We can also find them in the pattern given to Ezekiel in chapters 40 through 48. So, guys, these details, they are very important. They're very significant. That's why you see the banners around, because this is the pattern of the temple. And it's Christ himself who is the temple. He uh, destroyed the temple, okay, and then there won't be another one until he returns. Okay, so he prophesied the destruction, and it happened. And we know there's going to be another one, but it has to be his return. Okay, so we're going to go into these details. Some of these may be um, deep concepts. Please be patient. Please watch the other videos in the uh, playlist. We'll have a link for the playlist. And... Uh, Go, we'll go over the sons of Zadok. We'll go over some of the patterns that we've gone over already. But we'll also have a lot of new content and inf information about. It's all about the king, guys. I know there's a lot of things going on in the world. Leland, what about this? What about that? Guys, it, 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 what you do is you make all your focus on the return of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ himself. Get your orders and instructions from him. These are my orders and instructions. Show them the pattern of the sanctuary. So thanks for watching.